It doesn't really matter how you look at it, the BMW X6 just doesn't make much sense. It weighs 2.3 tons and it has all-wheel drive, but it's only got space for four people and it handles like something half its size. So naturally, when I drove the xDrive 50i version, I was completely skeptical. But at the end of the day, I completely loved it. The X6 defies a lot of things in a lot of ways, but the bottom line is that it is an amazing automotive achievement. And now BMW have turned it over to their trusty M division in an attempt to make it even better than it already is. And so, after denying they'd ever make one, here we have the BMW X6 M. M division is there to refine the BMW-ness of the cars it produces, and most of the time they're successful. I say most of the time because cars like the M3 are undoubtedly a triumph, but the M6 is, well, I'll be polite and say it's flawed. But considering this time round their starting point is the already brilliant X6, this should be epic. But the initial impression is that the changes are less epic. There aren't any carbon fiber pieces, probably because reducing a few kilograms would be pointless. The X6 is not subtle, but the styling differences between the regular models and the M version are exactly that. It has a revised front bumper with bigger air dams, more pronounced wheel arches with 20 inch rims, and at the back, the usual M quad exhaust treatment. So while the styling changes are subtle, this car has lost none of its massive presence. And there's a really interesting thing about the X6, especially this M version. The way it looks really does affect the way you feel while driving it. I've said previously that the xDrive 50i version made me feel like a bully, and that hasn't changed here. The odd thing is that driving the X6 actually makes you more open to the way it looks. I know a few people who absolutely couldn't stand the way it looked, but after taking them for a drive, they kind of conceded that they got it. Although that could have something to do with the interior, which is brilliantly comfortable and really well put together. The only thing I can say is there should be more headroom in the back. But my favorite part is this carbon fiber look leather that they've used in various places. There is one surprising thing though, I'm pretty familiar with the X6 options list. And I'm surprised they haven't really put more things in here as standard. Well, if someone handed you the key to an X6M, you wouldn't exactly throw it back at them and say you didn't want one because it had a substandard interior. But I would have thought they'd include things like the DVD system and seat ventilation. The one piece of kit that is standard is a camera system, which lets you view three sides of the car while attempting to make your way around the parking lot. And believe me, it's not just convenient, it's vital. This car is massive, so much so that it requires you to do things like six point turns in underground parking lots. Yes, yes, all of that is very important, but let's get to something that really matters, like the engine. It's a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8, puts out 408 kilowatts and 618 newton meters. 0 to 100 time is an almost unbelievable 4.7 seconds, and top speed is, of course, limited to 250 kilometers an hour. Compared to the standard V8 turbo, the M version has a massive 108 kilowatts and 80 newton meter advantage, but it just doesn't feel like it. Okay, the X6M has got monstrous acceleration, but the xDrive 50i version doesn't do too badly either. The six-speed auto box with the paddles feels about the same. In fact, the only real advantage you have in here is the M drive system. It does sharpen things up slightly, but it doesn't add any extra brilliance to the whole experience. The brilliance of the X6, no matter which version you're driving, is the xDrive all-wheel drive system that makes this car the first object in the history of the universe to write its own laws of physics. It's just impossible. I mean, say what you want about modern suspension systems and differentials and wide wheel tracks, but to make a 2.3 ton car handle the way this thing does is just mind-boggling. I swear, if we were living in the 17th century, everyone at BMW would have been put to the stake for using witchcraft in their suspension systems. The X6's handling is very similar to skydiving. It may scare you to death, or it may thrill you right out of your pants, but everyone should experience it once in their lives. But I have a problem. 
When you compare an M3 to a regular 3 Series, it is a lot better in so many ways. But there's nothing about this X6M that makes me believe that it's vastly better than the X-Drive 50i version. It doesn't look much different, it doesn't handle any better, and it certainly doesn't sound any better. So that essentially means you're paying for more power. Now I get that that's not a bad thing, but let's do the maths. The X6M is 378,000 Rand more than the X6 X-Drive 50i version, and you get 108 more kilowatts. That means if you want one of those, you'll be paying 3,500 Rand extra per kilowatt. And that just makes less sense than the X6 itself. The regular X6 is an achievement in itself, but with a massive 408 kilowatts and a sports car beating ride setup, the M version is a technological marvel. But it's not vastly superior to the lesser X-Drive 50i version. You'll be paying a huge premium for an M treatment that just doesn't feel that special.